Howdy, how we doing? It's good to see you. Hey, it's Bring a Friend Sunday. Did you bring a friend? I asked my um, three-year-old Jonathan to bring a friend, and he brought Lego Batman. <laughs> so here he is. Let's, let's hope he gets saved this morning. Um, but we're so excited you're here if you're new. And if, if you're, look, friends are family here. Everyone's family here. Amen? Eastside is a wonderful place. And we hope that this morning you experience the, the presence of God and that you experience how awesome of a community this is. So let's stand and sing Honey in the Rock. And I, I keep, keep looking, looking, I keep finding, you keep giving, you keep providing. I have all that I need, you are all that I need. And I keep praying, you keep moving, I keep praising, you keep proving. I have all that I need, you are all that I need. You are all that I need, yeah. There's honey in the rock, water in the stone, manna on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know. Everything I need, you got. There's honey in the rock, purpose in your plan, power in the blood, healing in your hand. Started flowing when you said it's done. There's honey in the rock. 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 Oh, how sweet. And oh, how sweet, how sweet it is to trust in you, Jesus. Oh, how sweet, how sweet it is to trust in you. Jesus, oh, how sweet, how sweet it is to trust in you, Jesus. Amen. Come. Good morning. How are y'all? If you're visiting today, thank you for coming with us uh, to worship with us. If you want to fill out the small point, the small card at the bottom of your bulletin, you can turn it in the offering plate or hand it to Jamie as you leave. So thank you for worshiping with us today. We're delighted. Um, And so we also have a, um, uh, we want to talk about the car wash that we had yesterday. It was a lot of fun yesterday. Um, We had a a lot of uh, visitors um, from the community come get the car wash. We also a lot of people from here get their car wash. So if your car's not clean, it's your fault because (laughs) it was open uh, 9 to 3, and we even had people coming at the end. And there's a bunch of shiny cars out there right now. It's, It's good. A few vacuumed cars. It was a lot of fun. Um, Thank you for the youth. Thank you for all the volunteers behind the scenes. A lot of work went into it, so thank you so much. Um, It was a joy just to serve um, y'all, but also serve the community and working with the youth. It was a a good day. Um, Wednesday night, we will not have service in here. It will be in the FLC. They're doing some renovations um, in here Wednesday night. So just remember, this coming Wednesday night, it will be in the FLC. Um, we want to pray for the Friday nights coming up in Liberty. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, again, outreaching in Liberty uh, on these Friday nights throughout the summer, um, getting involved with the community, showing them uh, we care, uh, we want to love on them, and we want to pour, in, uh, pour into them and reach out to them. So be in prayer for that. We've got VBS coming up. we got camps. We have a lot of stuff coming up. So be in prayer for that. Be, and be prayed up, like Jamie says, be prayed up just for here. Um, there's nothing like being prayed up and fueled up to expect, and um, uh, we need to get a quote. We need to, like, frame it somewhere or, or at least have it on the wall, but, you know, sh- praying that God will show up and show out, <clears throat> and that's every day. That's not, that's not just here, but it should be every day we wake up, and boy, is it hard on Monday mornings. It's hard for me. I, it's real hard for me, you know. I, I'm just trying to wake up, open my eyes, you know, and just get going, uh, but be praying for the service today and obviously tonight. And for the whole week. Uh, we also want to recognize, recognize Wesley Cito. He was not here a few Sundays ago when we did our recognition for graduates. Uh, but Wesley Cito did graduate high school. And so we also gave him a gift. And so we want to honor him. And he, he completed high school. And wherever God leads him next, we'll pray that God will protect him, guide him, and give him discernment. He's a brilliant mind. 
and he's a joy to serve, and I enjoy working with him. Uh, today is also Bring a Friend Day. Uh, again, like um, Chris said, he, did you bring your friend? Whether it's Lego or not, you know, we need, to, we need to bring friends. And today in the service, Jamie will be talking about, again, discipleship and what, what a disciple of Christ is. And uh, one of the key characteristics of a disciple, and you can see it all throughout the Gospels, is they're constantly bringing people to Jesus. That's what a friend does. And so, um, is that a characteristic of you? Um, are we bringing people to Jesus? Like, I believe it was Andrew. Um, you know, he was not a big name in the disciples, but man, he, uh, he was constantly bringing people to Jesus. And like Peter, he was brought to Jesus. And if it wasn't for that person that brought him to Jesus, we wouldn't have had a Peter. You know, and um, so who are you today and where are you at in, uh, in the work? And, and God's wanting to bring people to himself through you. Um, let's pray. <clears throat> Jesus, thank you for a beautiful day. Thank you for the fun yesterday and the, the work. Uh, may you give us a, a sanctified scrubbing today. as like we washed those cars yesterday that, um, that you cleanse us with your word today. And that you apply the soap and the water and you, uh, the Holy Spirit, may you scrub us from the inside out. May you clean us up. Um, and may people be able to look at us, not for our good works, but so our good works will glorify you. And they can see us like, and look at that, look, look at that nice ride. And look, look at the, how shiny it is and look at those nice wheels. Um, but not for our glory, but for you to point people to you. So may you clean us with your word today. Um, and may you help us. Uh, be a true friend to other people who don't have friends, but above all, let us uh, help us lead people to you. Um, may we be open and transparent and authentic, but may above all, may we be bold and loving um, and bringing people to you. So thank you for that. Thank you for the message today. Thank you for the music, all the behind the scenes preparation. In Jesus' beautiful name, amen. Amen. You know, there's so much going on here. June's going to be a crazy busy month. There's so many places to get involved and serve. And uh, Cooper needs help back there with the, with the tech ministry. If you can push buttons or you're technically minded, he'd love to have you serve there. Again, serving, you know, in all these areas isn't just to, you know, just to, it's, it's to get you involved in the community here, right? It's one thing to come in and be like, oh, okay, you know, see you next week. It's another thing to come here and live life with some people. Amen? So let's stand and sing a new song called Yes, He Can.
As our ushers come forward, let's pray over the offering. God, thank you so much for bringing us here this morning. God, for giving us joy, for giving us peace. I pray you bless the offering, bless the people that give. It's in your name we pray. Amen. You guys can have a seat. All right, great job, kids. Thank you for sharing that. 
And to not be one-upped by the kids, let's all just repeat the 66 books together. Ready, Genesis? Let's go. <laughs> let's stand up and sing Amazing Grace together. God, thank you for bringing us here this morning. God, thank you for welcoming us into your presence through your son, Jesus. And I pray that you bless Jamie this morning as he speaks. God, speak through him. Open up our hearts to hear what you have to say. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, before you have a seat, greet those around you and say hey.
Amen. Amen. Real quick, let me reiterate what Zach said and thank everybody who helped yesterday. Uh, I'll answer one quick question about that. Uh, I know it rained last night and early this morning. Uh, on those car washes, there are no refunds. <laughs> That's the chance we take when we do something outside, amen? First John, or I'm sorry, John chapter number one. John chapter number one. We're going to be looking at verses 35 through 46. Um, my first class in college was a class called Freshman Fundamentals at North Greenville. Um, it sounds great. And I'm sure you guys who went to college probably took something similar. Uh, and you got a, we got a syllabus. If, that's, if you don't know what that is, that's the little sheet of paper that they give you that tells you what you're going to be talking that semester. But freshman fundamentals at North Greenville was pretty much everything you're going to encounter your freshman year. Um, and everything I encountered my freshman year was not on the sheet that they gave us. Okay. <laughs> But in my brain, I was not probably mature enough to handle college just yet, okay? And so in my brain, fundamentally, since this is freshman fundamentals, I thought fundamentally, I knew what I was doing, you know? So let's not go to the class that they require you to take as a freshman and see how that goes. How many of you guys went to North Greenville? Raise your hand in here. I know a couple people. They don't like that, do they? They don't like you missing freshman fundamentals, and they sure as the world don't like you missing chapel. I found that out the hard way, okay? Pastor, you missed chapel? Well, I wasn't saved at the time, okay? So, yes, I missed chapel, okay? But if you take a look at freshmen in college, usually they have to take the basics. They take English 101, biology 101, freshman fundamentals, and classes like that. What if you take a class on Christian Discipleship 101? So what are the basics of being a disciple? Maybe we could ask it this way. What's the very essence of being a Christian? According to the New Testament, all Christians are disciples. And all disciples are Christians. Those terms are interchangeable, if you will. But what does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? It's hard to... Think of a more relevant question since one's eternal de destiny depends on the answer. If you are saved by grace, you are a disciple of his. Amen. So let's read John chapter number one. And if you're able, would you please stand for the reading of God's word? John one, I'm going to look at verses 35 through 46. The Bible says in John one, starting in verse 35, again, the next day, after John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following, and saith unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? He saith unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. Verse 42, And he brought him to Jesus, and then Jesus beheld, beheld him and said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. That shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip and saith unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Peter findeth Nathanael and saith unto him, We have found him, of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Verse 46, And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, Come and see. Amen. So I'm going to ask you today, being a disciple of Christ, are you bringing people to Jesus? Let's pray. Lord, we love you. Lord, I just thank you again for this service. Lord, I thank you for that great music. 
Lord, I thank you for this great congregation, those who just uh, maybe not have showed up yesterday, but they prayed for yesterday. And Lord, I just thank you for uh, a church that comes together, support our youth. And Lord, I just thank you again for all your many blessings. And I pray, Lord, as we celebrate Friend Day, bring a Friend Day, whatever we want to call it, pack a pew, bring a friend. Lord, I pray that we as disciples, we as Christians, our goal is to bring people to Jesus. And Lord, I just pray for these next few moments. So I pray anytime we do anything that they don't see us, they see you. And Lord, I just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. In the passage this morning, we learned three things about the identity of a true disciple. First, we, a disciple follows Jesus. If you, see, if you go back to verses 35 and 36, you see where it reads, Again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Andrew follows Jesus. John the Baptist stood on a dusty road with two of his disciples, one being Andrew. And the other one probably is John, the author of this gospel right here. And when Jesus walks by, John the Baptist says, behold, the Lamb of God. Now, we understand, too, it's easy to say he was a cousin of Jesus. But we understand that, hey, Jesus is passing by, folks. Are we asking ourselves, or more importantly, are we pointing people to Jesus? We had volunteers pointing people to the car wash and pointing people to the bake sale yesterday. And more times than not, folks would just ride on by and not make eye contact with, the, with those holding that sign. But we still got the message out. If their car was dirty, if they, if they hungered for a cupcake, if they wanted a, a, some monkey grass, they could buy some. If they wanted something that our church offered that day, there was no excuse. They were given a sign that said, come on here, here's what you need. Well, folks, we still may not be on the road today, but when we leave here, we should be living a life that says, hey, we got here what you need. Look at verse 37. And the two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. Just followed him after he talked. Amen. Just like that. Just followed him after he spoke. Yeah. Are you like, Pastor, he was Jesus. Well, sure. Do they watch us and follow us and come to church after we invite them? Yeah. No, because a lot of times it takes a minute. You know why it takes a minute? Because they want to see if, we're, if our walk matches our talk. The last three words of verse 37 capture the very essence of Christian discipleship. Is a disciple is someone who follows Jesus. What are you following this morning? I know on social media there's a thing called followers. How many... I won't say followers do you have or how many people do you follow? And if you follow somebody on social media, let me just be frank and up front. Are they worth following? I know Jesus is worth following. Why? Because he saved our souls. He made a way. We should be following him. In verse 38, Jesus, is no, Jesus notices them following him and he asks them a question. He says, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? You know, they didn't answer that question immediately. You know, I, you know, I wonder why when I read that. I wonder why they didn't answer. I mean, Jesus is speaking. And they say, what are you looking for? He turns around. The Messiah, the Son of God, turns around and says, what are you looking for? And they answered his question with a question. They said, where are you staying tonight? Let me just stop here and just kind of encapsulate that moment right there okay sometimes as christians or in ministry or whatever you, you're having a gospel conversation with somebody we don't ever steer it we let the holy spirit steer it because the holy spirit holy spirit will steer the truth out okay people tell me all the thing what i want to hear they won't tell me all the time what you want to hear I, listen I, I don't don't tell me what i want to hear tell me what tell me the truth and, he said, and they said, hey, uh, they didn't ask him what, what they were seeking when he asked, hey, what are you looking for? They didn't answer that question, but they said, where, where are you staying? Which told him, and he knew already because he's, he's Jesus, they're seeking me. I mean, anytime somebody says, hey, 
you know, you, uh, where you stay in that means you want to continue the conversation. You want to continue that conversation. So Jesus knew that he, that, and that's exactly what Andrew did. He, he came and he followed him. Andrew follows Jesus. In addition, his brother Peter follows Jesus. In verses 40 through 42, Andrew brings his brother Peter to Jesus. And Jesus says, Simon, you shall be called Cephas, which means rock in Greek. Now, post-Testament as we live in right now, that could be, that, that's very funny. It was probably even funny then. You know, we get the, the, the pre-ascension Peter, or the post-ascension Peter. We see how, what a, on, on fire, what a true rock he was for Christ. But now he's nothing but a hothead. Now he's nothing but just some, some arrogant fisherman who, who, who knows, and they're like, you're going to be a, a rock? Why does Jesus change his name? Jesus knew that Simon would change as a result of following him. And folks, when we start following Jesus, when we give our heart and life to Christ, there is a change that the world can see. You know, Peter's story is very encouraging. It's very encouraging. Why? Like most of us, if not all of us, all of us, Peter did not follow Jesus perfectly. He didn't. Fortunately, Jesus abounds in grace and mercy. Andrew followed Jesus. Peter followed Jesus. And in the text, we see that G uh, Philip follows Jesus. Look at verse 43. The day following Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip and saith unto him, Follow me. Folks, being a disciple of Jesus is not complicated. A disciple follows Jesus. This is the very essence of discipleship. The phrase follow me literally means on following me. Disciples don't just follow Jesus for a season or when they feel like it or when it's convenient. Disciples follow Jesus their whole lives even when no one is watching. Even when it hurts. Even when it's unpopular. Even when you don't feel like it. Even when all hope seems lost. Keep following Jesus. You ever got a puppy? I'm talking a brand new puppy. You, your kids talk you into it, you know. You unsaved kids talk you into getting a puppy. And the puppy starts to grow and grow with the family. Pretty soon the puppy's attached to that family. Wherever you're, if you're in the living room, puppy's in the living room. If you're outside, the puppy's outside. When you don't see said puppy, you know something's getting tore up or the carpet's getting dirty or something's, something crazy's going on. But no matter where you are, at a certain point in time, that puppy is right there underneath your feet. You know, that's what a disciple does. A disciple eagerly follows his master. Disciples should be eager to follow Jesus. Following Jesus means imitating Jesus. 1 Corinthians 11.1 1 says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Amen. Imitating Jesus means imitating his character. Amen. I said this Wednesday night. I had a major character flaw. I'm going to tell myself again. Monday night. I did not imitate Christ whatsoever. Some of y'all are like, Pastor, what did you do? I got into a heated argument on a church softball field. <laughs> so, my character did not imitate the character of Christ. Which means, we strive to love like Christ loved. Forgive like Christ forgave. Serve like Christ served. Humble ourselves like Christ humbled himself. Obey our Heavenly Father like Christ obeyed his Heavenly Father. Folks, following Jesus literally means just that, following Jesus. 
It doesn't mean, hey, Jesus, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, I don't like that decision. Now I'm just going to sit here and watch it and see how it plays out. No, following Jesus means following Jesus. The, the, Jesus didn't want the disciples just to follow him when it was easy and when it was good during this period. It was going to get tough. It was going to get, they were going to get beaten. They were going to get bruised. They were going to get battered. And folks, he is telling us the same thing today. It's not always going to be easy. Folks, you had shoulders being out of place washing them cars yesterday. Amen, Charlton and Zach. Sore this morning. It's not always easy. You mean I got to sign up uh, on, on a Friday night and serve and invite people to our church in downtown Liberty for these events? No, you don't have to. You don't have to. But folks, as a church, as a Christian, we should want to bring people to Jesus. It's not always easy. Friday night's our family fun night. That's our family dinner night. That's where we get together. We've done it for years and years and years. Don't tell me that. Tell God that. You don't want to sign up. At least just pray for the ones who are going out. I'm not here to make you feel bad. I'm just telling you that sometimes we have to get out of our comfort zone and have to get over ourselves to serve Christ. You know why? Because it ain't ever about us. It don't say following, following the preacher or following Matthew or following Andrew or following Peter. No, it says follow Jesus. Follow him where? Where's Jesus going? Well, he's going to the cross. In about three and a half years, he's going to be at the cross. Jesus calls his disciples to follow him to the cross. Folks, we all have a point in time on this earthly plane, okay? Well, we're going to hit a fork where we can continue on the path of following him or we can let the devil win and get off track. We all know somebody who was on fire for God. I've had people tell, in leadership here tell me, hey, so-and-so, we, I, they used to be on fire for God. I don't know what happened, and now they don't come to church anymore. Why? You know why? Because they were following Jesus when it was felt good. They followed Jesus when it was easy. Folks, at a certain point in time, we're all going to have to stare at a cross. At a point in time, it's always not, it's going to be hard. It's not going to be comfortable. It's going to make us uncomfortable. It's not going to be convenient. It's going to get us up early, and we're going to have to stay late. We're going to have to serve. We're going to have to clean up. We're going to have to help, and we're going to have to do things that we don't normally want to do. But, folks, when you follow Jesus, it doesn't matter what we want to do. It's a matter what does he want us to do. You know, following Jesus means more than just liking Jesus. Today's church, we're fans of Jesus, but we're not followers of Jesus. You can't be a disciple if you're simply a fan of Jesus. You got to follow him. Many people today are often misunderstood the connection between faith and following. Many people think, I just need to like Jesus, right? I like him. It's not enough, folks. It's not enough to believe in Jesus or like Jesus. You must follow him. Folks, the demons even believe in Jesus. It's not enough to believe in him or just like him. Or you must follow him. You know, but no one follows Jesus perfectly. No one. Peter didn't always follow Jesus perfectly. Being a disciple does not mean perfection. And you're going to hear that from the unsaved masses well, you're not perfect. No, but I serve a perfect Savior Amen. who's worked a perfect grace and salvation in me. Amen. But I'm not perfect. You're right. And don't you love the outside world when they say, when they just want to claim how imperfect the church is or how imperfect Christians are? You're right. We are. This church is run by an imperfect Leadership has an imperfect pastor. You know why? I'm, the, I'm, a, I'm an imperfect pastor of an imperfect church. We are imperfect. But if we keep our heads down, 
eyes focused on him, we serve a perfect Savior who has a perfect will for this church. Jesus told Peter, hey, follow me and I'll change you. Follow me. You got a new name. He's telling some here this morning that. Follow me and I'll change you. Folks, you can't change yourselves. Good grief, I tried. We all tried and tried and tried to do it our way. And where's it lead us? Back down the road of despair. Back down the road of, of, of uh, at the beginning, where you were. And here you are this morning. Folks, Jesus is calling. He's calling some to follow him today. Secondly, a disciple promotes Jesus. Back to Andrew. Andrew promoted Jesus. Andrew was Simon's Peter, Simon Peter's brother. Andrew encourages the life-changing power of Jesus. And he's so excited about Jesus that he wants to tell the whole world. So he starts by telling his brother. On a side note, most people come to faith in Christ through a family member. Don't let, hey, uh, some of you going to get mad at me right here, okay? It ain't all the church's responsibility to get the gospel out. And we can't get it out if you're not inviting them here. And it's not the staff or the deacon's job to invite people to this church. We should be. Every time we go out, we better be as we go out. But it's not fall on eight men's shoulders. It is, if you're a member of Eastside Baptist Church, it is your responsibility to invite people. Whether it's friend day, pack a pew day, sit beside me day, I don't care what it is. Folks, every Sunday morning and night. Thought I'd miss that one this week, didn't you? Should be bring a friend day. He's something to get excited about, right? We should want to hear, we want to should invite friends to come. Whenever we read about Andrew in the Gospel of John, you know what we find him doing? Bringing people to Jesus. He brings his brother to Jesus. He brings the guy with the loaves and fishes to Jesus. He brings the Greeks to Jesus. We cannot bring people to, to Jesus today, folks. You know why? Well, he ascended to heaven. Physically, we cannot bring people to Jesus. But we can bring them into the body of Christ, his church. And when you invite somebody to church, they can hear the gospel in the singing. They can hear the gospel through the preaching. Folks, they can hear the gospel through the announcements. And folks, they should sense the Holy Spirit the moment they pull not into the welcome center. They should feel the Holy Spirit in a church the moment they pull in our parking lot. And they see the effects of the gospel in changed lives. Many people in our lives are open to going to church. But they've never been invited. You'll get a good, here, here's a common reaction you'll get when you invite somebody to church. And I pray, we saw that yesterday, didn't we, Brother Randy? Inviting some people to church that stopped by to get your car washed. And people were leaving car washes with, with uh, they got their car washed, they had cakes, they had cookies, they had cupcakes, they had plants. I mean, they just, they just left here like they just won the lottery, you know? But folks, when you invite somebody to church, we're giving them more than that. We're giving them Jesus Christ. But, we all had an initial reaction. You'll have it. We may have it Friday night. You may have it on a random Tuesday you invite somebody to church. Hey, we'd love to have you come to our church. Lead it off by this. Hey, do you go to church anywhere? Very simple. Do you go to church anywhere? Well, no, I don't. I'd love to invite you to Eastside. I used to say something, well, I know a place. <laughs> and they're like, oh, you're, you're inviting me to church? Why is the world so shocked that Christians are inviting them to church. You know why? Because they don't ever hear it. They're not used to people caring. We don't care no more. We don't care that people die and go to hell, do we? We don't care about that. We just want to have programs. We want to just have, have this and that. We want to have facilities. 
Folks, we better care about the eternal destination of Liberty, South Carolina, of Norris, of Six Mile, of Easley, of Pattersville, of Greenville, of Travelers Rest. We should care about where people, when they die, where they go. And if we don't care, we are wasting God's time. Andrew promoted Jesus. He wasn't perfect. Peter was weak as well. And when the pressure became intense, Peter denied Christ. Like we've all done. Well, I've never denied Jesus Christ. You ever had the Holy Spirit tell you to invite that somebody to church? And you didn't? You know what you did? You denied Christ. Well, I've never had the Holy Spirit tell me about somebody to church. Then you can see me after service. And we can see where your eternity lies. We've all done. Some of you are doing that right now. You're denying Christ. You're denying the Holy Spirit. Nope, I'm not. I, it's his friend day. I can't go up there. He's going to give that invitation. I can't go get saved today. They don't know me there. Folks, we may not know you if you're visiting with us. But God knows you. The pressure is up. You're still denying Christ. But there's good news this morning. Remember Pentecost where Peter preached? Peter became bold as a lion. The Holy Spirit empowered Peter to hold to be a bold witness. And he can be that, you can be that bold witness that Peter was today. In our moments of weakness and fear, we've got to ask for help. Every disciple has the privilege of promoting Jesus. Disciples realize that it's not enough just to follow him. We must open our mouths and tell people about Jesus. Because in a, in, in a Southern Baptist mindset, we carry our Bible that we leave in the back seat of our car. Come on. And we go to church. We show up for Sunday school. We even show up for Wednesday night. We collect the prayer list on Wednesday nights. We show up at a car wash. We got the hot dogs, got a car washed. But are we inviting people? Are we telling people about Christ? It's easy to just do the Sunday and Wednesday thing. But are we doing the Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday thing? We don't follow him just two days a week. You got to follow him at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning when you hit the office running. You got to follow him at 530 when you're coming home from traffic on 85. We always got to follow him. You know, the folks, the, what sometimes we get wrong is we think, well, if we're just nice, the world can comprehend the gospel. Well, I don't know what your Bible says, but does it say we're supposed to be on villains here? That we're not supposed to be nice? We have Jesus Christ living in our heart. Shouldn't we have a smile on our face at all times? Even when things are bad, we still can smile. Why? Because he's still on the throne. The God of the universe who's in control still loves you. We've got to open our mouths and tell people about Jesus. But they're not going to comprehend the gospel just because we say please and thank you. We should say that. And we've got, we got a generation who's missing that. And let me just add this. This ain't even in my notes. You got this, this, you're going to enjoy this one, okay? If my children, not your children, my children, look at any adult in this place and say, huh? You say, ma'am. If you're a lady, ma'am, huh, ma'am, you can play that game all you want to until don't ever waver and they'll back down. If any of my kids say, huh, to a man in here, sir, huh, sir, huh, sir, we, we can keep going. Or feel free just to pop them upside the head, whatever's quicker. If you ain't got time to that huh game, just pop them upside the head. But we're not teaching a generation to... Say please and thank you and respect our elders. You, and ladies, you may be younger than me. Probably you are, some of you. I'm going to still say yes, ma'am. Why? Because it's a courtesy thing. But even if I say yes, ma'am, to the lady at Ingalls, or if I say yes, sir, to the guy at, at Arnold's, 
That still doesn't mean that they see Christ in me. We have to open our mouths and tell them about Jesus. We have to engage in spiritual conversations. Now, our, our talk, our walk need to match. Disciples realize that they don't need to have all the answers to talk about Jesus. Listen, I don't think anybody's going to come up to us Friday nights and say, listen, what, what's, your, what's, your, what's your ideas on the 1906 view of Arminianism? You want to come to Eastside? <laughs> or you want to go on Jeopardy? Whatever one. You want to go on Jeopardy or come to Eastside? You know? You don't have to have all the answers. But you can point to the one who does. These early disciples, you know, they didn't know much about Jesus. They just followed him after meeting him. They didn't take evangelism notes or evangelism class. They didn't have seminary training. They were just blue-collar workers who hardly knew anything about Jesus. But you know what? They knew enough about him that they wanted to give them They hardly knew anything about him. But they knew enough. But they wanted their lives changed. And that they had met the one who could change their lives. And who could change the lives of others if they brought people to him. Folks, that, this right here should resonate with each one of us. And it should resonate in our church. Because once they, listen, I, I've been to churches. I've preached in churches where they don't want the Spirit of God to move. And it's prevalent in our association. Ain't it, Brother Randy? They don't want to grow. They don't want to do nothing different. By the way, the song, Yes, You Can, Yes, He Can. Let me get that theologically right. Yes, He Can. That wouldn't be sung in most Baptist churches this morning. But it's a, it's, a, it's a song about, yes, Jesus can. Why wouldn't we sing that? Or we can sing the 18 stanzas of Just As I Am without one plea. Great song. Great song at the invitation. But folks, we're going through times where we need to say, yes, he can. And folks, they know within five seconds when they visit here whether Jesus is in the house or not. And thank goodness, we got Stanley and Raymond out there with smiling faces. Now, that's all they got working for them because they're not too much to look at. I mean, come on. I'm sorry, Miss Margie. I'm sorry. I mean, it was the ears. I get it. Me and the ears, you know. Amen. But you know, they sense it. They sense it when they, when they come into this place. Hey, it's good to see you. I'm so-and-so. They want to know your name. And hey, I don't know, what's your name? And if somebody's been visiting here for a moment, and you sit over here and you don't know anybody over here or vice versa or in the middle, go to them and say, hey, I'm so-and-so. It's good to see you today. Amen. Thirdly, disciples trust Jesus. I know what time it is. I'm getting there. We become disciples by trusting that Jesus is the Son of God. Folks, you can trust him today. You can trust Jesus this morning. There's evidence that hundreds of fulfilled prophecies have happened or, have happened or are happening right now. Read the book of Revelation. I know a lot of it's symbolic. And I'm not an expert on eschatology. But folks, the signs of the times are there. They were looking for Jesus even during this time after he ascended. They were immediately looking for him. So now we're so far past that, we should be eagerly waiting on his return and telling the, as many people as we can about him. 
if we were to put on the screen, how many people did you invite to Christ to church this week? And we listed your name and the number beside it. What would it say? How many gospel conversations have you had? Other than something being here, which are great. What would it say? Name and then number. It gets quiet in a Baptist church when you start talking about outreach. Oh, yeah. Amen. Folks, there's more evidence that Jesus rose from the dead oh, yeah. that there is the Mayflower ever sailed the ocean. Yeah. Right. And our history books say that, and we believe it, and it did. Folks, we can believe. There's many books that say Jesus rose from the dead. I've never seen the Mayflower. I've never seen the face of Jesus, but I've seen his Holy Spirit work. Amen. Yes. Amen. Folks, there's evidence of changed lives. You know, Jesus performed of what we know, 37 miracles in the Gospels, proving that he was the Son of God. Folks, he is who he said he is. Folks, he is the great I am. We needed access to the Father, so Jesus, the Son of God, provided that access. No matter how hard we try, no matter how religious we get, no matter how we try to earn our way to heaven, we will always fall short until we give our heart and life to Him. Trying to earn our way into heaven is like trying to jump the Grand Canyon. It's like trying to fly the moon by just flapping our arms. It's like trying to hold our breath underwater for 10 hours. It is impossible. We don't get to heaven by following Jesus. We don't get to heaven by promoting Jesus. Folks, we only get to heaven by trusting in Jesus. In other words, we trust that everything Jesus did through this life, through his death, through his resurrection, was for our benefit, and it was sufficient to remove all our sins and reconcile us to God. Asking Jesus to forgive you of your sins is the first step of Christian fellowship. Are you a disciple of Christ? I'm not talking about being a fan. I'm talking about being sold out for him. I'm not talking about sitting on the sidelines either. I'm talking about getting in the game. We got enough spectators in churches today. We need some participators. So are you a disciple of Jesus Christ this morning? You can be. You can start today. You can start your discipleship ministry today. Well, I didn't going to enter the ministry. Well, you become a Christian. You signed up for ministry. Amen. Folks, you can trust him. I encourage you to try him today. Amen. Try him. Give him your heart. He's never failed you. He'll never fail you. On the failing side of that relationship, it always falls on us. We're the ones who fail. He's never failed us. He'll never forsake you. All he'll do is love on you. You can trust him. And folks, he's here. And he wants to have a relationship with you today. He just asked those guys, hey, what are you looking for? You know what they did? They started following him. You know why? They were looking for him. What are you looking for this morning? He's asking. I'm not asking. The Holy Spirit's asking. But what are you looking forward? What are you looking for this morning? Would you please stand, bow your head, and close your eyes? Nobody looking around. Let me ask again, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? You're looking for peace? You're looking for encouragement? You're looking for, maybe you've had... Trials and trials and trials. You've never given your heart and life to Christ. Well, folks, he's the peace speaker. He calmed the wind and the waves. And folks, if, if you've never given your heart and life to Christ, if you've never been saved, then you don't have peace today. I usually don't mention this one, but what if, what if you just want to get, rededicate your life? Maybe you kind of back a little bit. Want to get back on point. You can. Just because I don't mention that doesn't mean you can't do it. 
Well, I've been out of church for so long. I've just, I've just fell out of fellowship. Listen, you might have fell out of fellowship with him, but he still has you in the palm of his hand. Or maybe you want to get your baptism on the right side of your conversion. Meaning maybe you got saved a long time ago and you've never been baptized. Those baptismal waters don't bring salvation. Salvation was brought by Jesus alone, through faith alone. But maybe you've never been baptized. You want to show the world. You come up here and become a candidate for baptism. All we're going to do is take your name and present you in the front. Or maybe you want to come do like these, these others already have and just pray. Folks, we've got so much to be thankful for around here. Kids singing, preschoolers singing last week, youth at a church. Folks, you see the future of Eastside Baptist Church at God's disposal right here. And you see God moving. Or maybe you want to come and you've been visiting for a while. You want to come join our fellowship. Maybe you've been visiting for a week or two and you sense God's present and you've been praying and God's led you here. Folks, you come on home. You come on home right now. You come as the Holy Spirit leads. Y'all can be seated. Y'all look this way.